Alright, so let's uh, take a look at a little bit of polygon information. So one of the things that is different here is this water color is uh, obviously different and I kind of want it to be the same. So we go here to water and we can see that um, it's just looks like the polyline one we dealt with at first. There's the color and that's uh, pretty straightforward. So if I want to make it that color it looks kind of like a light gray, maybe something around that. Hmm can't seem to get it quite right. Um, okay, so I'm going to, since I'm really bad with colors, which is kind of funny, uh, because I'm supposed to be good at this, uh, I'm going to look a handy thing to do if you can't quite figure out the color of something. And I'm just going to take a screenshot of this. There we go. And I'm sure that there are much easier ways to do this. Uh, there's uh, add-ons for the browser that you can use to just click in something and see the hex color, but I'm a little bit old, so what am I going to do? Now, in here, it's all RGB colors and HSL, whatever that is. Um, so you have to enter in the values. Make sure you, if you are doing that, you're clicking the right one. Or you can actually, it doesn't really say, but you can just erase this all and put in a hex. And you can see it went to black. So there, we put in that hex color, and there we go. And if we come back, it's still the same hex. Now, there's kind of a weird effect going on here with like this little pixelated line along the shoreline that's not here. And that's here. That's this one PX stroke. Or it may not be quite that. It might be this water shadow. But let's turn off this, this PX stroke by just making it be the same color. So it looks like it is the same color. So let's head to water shadow and try turning that off and on. Oh, that seems to have done it right there. So we'll just turn it off. And there we go. So that was just another line. So in terms of the polygon, so this is basically a giant polygon around, multi-polygon around the world, um, that is the water. We can add opacity like other things. There's also pattern, and uh, this is slightly different than, um, for instance, the icons. The patterns will replicate across the whole uh, polygon. So something like this is horrible and doesn't really make much sense to do. But sometimes you want to add a little bit of texture. So for instance, we can look up SVG textures, free. And there are some nice ones. Hero Patterns has some good ones. Um, but you may have to customize your own. So say I just want to have a little bit of texture. This doesn't, but this is important to show you. I'm going to go to Hero Patterns, click on Texture, download the unstyled one. OK. So I have a little SVG, it's quite little. And we head over to Mapbox and we want to add one. So we go here in the icons, manage icons, upload SVG image, we try uploading that. All right, are we successful? We're successful. Okay, so now we have to go find it. So somewhere in our list is gonna be the one we just added. Sometimes it the sizing is a little tricky, so you might not actually find it. Oh, there's some dots. That's not it. But it'll probably be the one that kind of stands out for looking wrong. So this one is it. It looks a little weird. Uh, it's just two big dots. So, okay, we add it and it looks pretty bad actually. So maybe we'd have to make a custom SVG. Or we can play with it a little. We can adjust the opacity. Maybe I'm going to make it 0.5. Okay, maybe I can make it less. 0.1. Maybe I could even... Okay. Maybe that's not quite right. Maybe I want to have just the, oh, this layer be the texture, and I want another polygon to be underneath it. So what I can do here is click on the water, and then duplicate the layer. Okay, so I have a water copy and the water, and they're both textures. So I'm going to make the one that's on the bottom not be a texture anymore. So let's get rid of that. And we see the color opens up again, and there it's uh, back. So now we're going to make the opacity of this layer come up a bunch. Okay, there we go. So we can see we have a little bit of texture just just visible um, behind that. And it changes as we zoom in. You can see it jumps around a little. So we might actually have to change a couple different things about it as we go along. But that's some of the polygon information. Now when it comes to polygon borders, all you're allowed to do is give it a very small border of a one pixel stroke. You can see here that I just added that. Um, or you can make it white, or you can just make it um, fully transparent as well by dragging the slider on the side to transparent. 
and uh, that maybe isn't always enough for your needs because you have, a, have to have a bit more um, ability to have a big border on something you're working on. In that case, you're going to want to turn it into a polyline. And uh, that involves changing the type of data, which we're going to be going over again in the next section. But just briefly, just so you know how to do that, you would go up here to select data. And then you can see actually the water data all showing here. And you're going to go from fill to line. And you can see that it warns me. And you would change that. And then you would have a line. And again, we're, I just wanted to introduce you very briefly to this little different interface, because now we're going to move into working with data understanding what's going on when we enter data in here and split it up, and then we're going to go find our own data. So, we'll see you in the next section.